Hey everybody, it's Chris. Good to see you. One of the most common questions that I received is, how do I set up my terminal, my prompt, my shell, all of those things? I'm going to break down the tools that I use, how I configure my themes and my prompt, how I keep them maintained, and all of that jazz. So if you're on a Windows environment, you're using VS Code, you're using PowerShell, you're using Windows Terminal, any combination of those, or you want to, here's how I do it. There's four main goals that we have today. One, we're gonna walk through nerd fonts, which is gonna be our source of our fonts and icons that we use in the environment. Second, we're gonna work with a tool called Oh My Posh, <laughs> where we're gonna set up our theme and customize it and get our colors and everything the way we want it. After that, we're gonna work with VS Code and Windows Terminal, get those to use the nerd fonts and Oh My Posh and see what it looks like in that environment. And then last, we're going to set up our PowerShell profile. I'll show you what my profile looks like, how I configure it. I'm a former MVP from Microsoft for Windows PowerShell, so I have some opinions there. But that's going to handle our quality of life and manage the life cycle of our tools, such as upgrading them. Let's start by taking a look at Nerd Fonts. Nerd Fonts is this really cool website that you can go to, nerdfonts.com, where they take all of these symbols used in a plethora of different tool sets kind of combine them together, or as they say, they patch all of these icons and all of these fonts together so that you can download nerd fonts, fonts that are meant to be used when you're writing code or dealing with terminals or really having to look at code and code configuration. You want nerd fonts. First off, you could just go to nerd fonts and download them and put them in your fonts folder. That's fine. I like to rely on my old buddy Scoop. I'll link to a shorts that I have where I talk about using it and why I like Scoop, but I use Scoop to install various applications, fonts, configurations, etc. So we'll just need to add a new bucket to Scoop, which is like, where do you get applications from? That's a bucket uh, called Nerd Fonts. And once we add that bucket to our Scoop configuration, we can then download Nerd Fonts, specifically the hack font. So you can see here, I'm just running a Scoop bucket add nerd fonts, and it goes, found it, it's added, you're good to go. Next, we're going to install a really popular font package called Hack. It's the one that I use. You can just do scoop install hack nf for nerd fonts. And as you can see here, once you do that, it grabs the zip file and installs it, and away you go. You now have the font packages ready to rock and roll. However, if you're like, what else is out there? Or maybe you hate Hack because you have a specific need, or you know, it just doesn't match your mojo, you can go to programmingfonts.org. And from there, it gives you this cool selection where you can see every single font that they have. You can change the format of it to Python or Go or whatever language that you want to see. Either way, go here if you want to explore different fonts, but I'm just going to keep using Hack for this demonstration. As a quick sanity check, I like to go to the font section of the Windows system and make sure that you can find the Hack font from Nerd Fonts. Just type in Hack in the options. And you should see three different results here for the hack font packages. Just to get under the hood a little bit, if you look at the version that I have here, the 330, that's the current version as of this publishing, you can go into the GitHub project that contains the scoop bucket for nerd fonts and see the hack NF application here is version 3.3.0. So you can kind of see like, where is it getting that number from? Oh, it's in the manifest and that JSON that we're grabbing. And it's reflected here when we do a scoop list. Okay, we're nerdy with our fonts. We have what we need to supply fonts and icons to our environment. Now let's talk about Oh My Posh. Oh My Posh is my favorite theme engine. I like it. I've used it for a long time. I think they're awesome. I want to send them some traffic. You can go to ohmyposh.dev, and that will explain everything that you want to know about the project beyond the fact that it's a prompt theme engine and it looks really cool. Follow the current install process. I'm using Winget here directly from their documentation because their documentation is fantastic. And just go look at that. But I just use the Winget to install it and then poof, it's on your PC. No big deal. The power of Oh My Posh is that you don't really have to make a theme for your prompt. It's a theme engine and there's a lot of already baked in themes you can use. So all we have to really do is just tell Oh My Posh to initialize itself against a particular type of shell, in this case, PowerShell and then invoke that expression. So if you run what you see here, oh my posh init PowerShell, pipe that to invoke expression, you're gonna get the default or kind of standard theme that comes with oh my posh, where it shows the runner and some information on Git and things like that, it's pretty basic. Now you can certainly just stay with the basic theme, but there's a ton of themes out there. 
and I like to use this particular theme. Notice it changes just slightly modifying the init command. So we start with our normal oh my posh init PowerShell. We then dash dash config parameter, and I'm telling it here's where you can find the configuration I want you to use, the theme I want you to use. And I'm just leveraging the posh themes path environment variable that already exists for me so that I don't have to worry about that changing in the future. I don't really need to know where it is. I'm just saying, look up the value of that environmental variable to the path and then add on the JSON file of the theme that I want. I'm one that always wants to go, hey, but how do you upgrade this thing and maintain it? Upgrades are pretty straightforward. There's actually really good documentation on their site about all the different ways you can control upgrades. But the basic stuff is run an upgrade command. If there's a major version upgrade, it's not going to auto upgrade. You can see here we're going from version 24 to 25 and it's going, I'm available, but I'm not upgrading until I run a force command on that next command there with the parameter force. That will actually perform the upgrade. It took a few seconds and then running a dash dash version to oh my posh just returns whatever version it is. You can see I've upgraded to 25.5.0. So this is kind of the most manual way to upgrade. It only gets better from there. You can set up auto upgrades and rules and things like that if you want. Now we're going to look at the two heavy hitters in the Windows world for IDEs. There's VS Code should be your main driver, at least it is for me, or something like VS Code. And Windows Terminal, which, ah, haha, right? What, what, Windows Terminal? It's brought up more than you would think, especially in Windows 11 and version, I think, 1.10 of Windows Terminal. You're just going to need it from time to time. And I like my shell and my theme to look identical across these two. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We'll start with Windows Terminal because I think it's really buried. Like where to set the fonts is extremely buried. So fire up version 1.10 uh, or greater of Windows Terminal. You're going to go to the drop down next to your tab and choose settings from under there. Look at profiles and find the defaults so that we're setting our fonts and theme everywhere. And then in default, scroll down to you see appearance. Once you expand appearance, you'll see all this text stuff here. Find the font faced text line right next to my little number four and then change it by scrolling down in the number five selection there to hack nerd font, whatever font you've chosen. And that's going to upgrade it as the default font for all of your tools. Easy peasy. I will note, you can also edit the JSON file. You see at the bottom left corner, it says open JSON file, but you then have to handcraft the font section. I just like to let the UI do it. It's not really worth me futzing around in the JSON, but you do you, boo. That's it for Windows Terminal. Now it's VS Code. If you look at the documentation for VS Code, there's this whole terminal.integrated.something set of configuration parameters. We're interested in the font family parameter. And this allows you to specify one or multitude of fonts to use. It'll try the first one. If that doesn't, doesn't work, to go to the second, et cetera, et cetera. Open up your configuration for VS Code. Using the UI here, you're just going to want to type in that terminal.integrated.fontfamily. It's going to take you directly to the configuration you want. And then just type in hack nerd font. You don't need quotes or anything around it because it's just one item. Alternatively, if you like the JSON, you'll want to go ahead and upgrade the terminal integrated font family there. That does need quotes because we're in the JSON world. And do note there's an editor.font family that's kind of the default for the universe. Uh, you can go ahead and supersede that with the terminal configuration. But if you wanted to set something globally like I have here, I'm saying anything that doesn't specify what font, start with hack nerd font and then go through the three normal fonts that VS Code has. All right, you're doing great. Now let's talk about your PowerShell profile. PowerShell profile is kind of underrated in a lot of ways. It's sort of your workhorse for making sure that anytime a terminal appears on a Windows machine, what happens? The profile is pretty much always run unless you've altered your profile settings. So what I like with the profile is anytime I install tools or quality of life things, utilities, whatever it is, I then want PowerShell from its profile to manage those. So the nerd fonts, the oh my posh, the configuration that we have or the dependencies we have for VS Code in the terminal. I want PowerShell in the profile to automatically manage as much of that as it can so that I don't have to remember it and it's taken care of for me. By default, your PowerShell profile is located in your documents or your OneDrive version of documents under the PowerShell folder, not the old Windows PowerShell folder, uh, as profile.ps1. You can also echo a variable called profile um, and it'll tell you the same thing. It'll tell you where your profile is. Beyond that, I'm going to assume that you know everything you need about profiles. Here's where it is. We're going to edit this file. I use a series of functions to manage the different applications that I have and the different needs that I have. 
The first of that is a function called update scoop. And that's just going to let me know, hey, I'm performing an update on scoop, running the scoop update dash dash all command so that it upgrades all of my stuff. Because in this environment, I don't care. I don't care if something breaks because it's a new version of a tool. It's my development environment. If it's not your dev environment, maybe your prod environment, you might want to gate this a little bit. Maybe have certain things upgrade, certain buckets upgrade, and other things not. So adjust this to your needs. The second is something to keep PowerShell up to date because I get so annoyed at the little thing that pops up saying, there's a new update for PowerShell. Would you like to download and install it? Of course I would. Just always give me the new version. I don't need to be nagged. So here we're checking to see if we're on version 7 for just, you know, sanity's sake. And if we are, we're going to go ahead and run the winget command to upgrade PowerShell because I've done the install using winget. I think winget's pretty cool. And then we upgrade it automatically every time our shell is launched. Finally, we set up the prompt, such as oh my posh. So here I say, hey, we're going to go ahead and initialize our prompt, run that long command that I showed you where we're selecting a custom profile for oh my posh. I also get annoyed when Python's virtual environment adds itself to the prompt. It kind of just butts in. And so I'm using that environment variable virtual environment disable prompt equals one to avoid that. And I've got a link here as to where I found that from the oh my posh documentation. And away we go. At this point, we've initialized the prompt. With these functions defined, I just execute updating scoop, then updating PowerShell, then initializing my prompt and assuming there's no issues because I'm try catching on all of those commands. We go ahead and say it's time for fun and we have Kirby flipping a table with stars around it. I don't know. That just feels motivational when I go to code. So here's the results. You can see like the standard stuff that I would have to do pretty much every morning when I log on to VS Code is handled for me. I think every morning at least one scoop app gets updated and I like being on the cutting edge of these tools because I'm often testing features with them and wanting to play with what's new. In addition, Scoop lets you switch between newer and older versions of apps, so it doesn't really matter if I have a current version and an old version installed. I can go to the old one anytime I need to. Windows Terminal looks pretty much the same. You can see it here. Slightly different color variations, but the exact same results are achieved so that whenever I have to go between the two, often for like some kind of weird admin command or something system related, I'm not having to struggle against a shell that looks nothing like what I'm used to day to day. One last thing, I also leave a section for any times I want to override the path variable. Sometimes I'm going to do that ephemerally, and so I'll put that here. And any aliases that I want to set up, such as this one that translates the letters TF into Terraform commands, because ain't no way I'm typing that every time. Well done. That's it. That's all the config. You don't really have to deal with any of this stuff ever again, but you have it here if you ever need it. Just as a reminder, this is what we did. We started by installing nerd fonts, getting that hack font package installed so that we have all the icons and fonts that really work in our nerdy world for us. We then set up Oh My Posh, which is our theme engine, where we're gonna choose either the default or a custom theme. It really makes our prompt pop, makes it easier to see what we're doing with Git and different applications and AWS CLI, all that jazz. We then got the configuration into VS Code and Windows Terminal to use the fonts and finally used PowerShell Profile as our workhorse to make sure that our scoop apps are updated, that our PowerShell is updated, and that we have our prompt set the way we want. Thank you very much. You've been awesome. If you could leave a comment with like anything, a heart, a, you know, love emoji, a, you know, poop emoji, I don't really care. I'd appreciate any interaction with this and uh, I will make sure to respond to you if you have a question or just a comment or give you a little heart thing back if you leave a comment. So how does that sound? Thank you very much. Take care.